OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network Google account and management or Google account management and safety. There are, um, this started being a, a, uh, an issue, I'm going to say, when people started using Google, they were forced to use Google during COVID. And they're still using Google during COVID. Uh, but teachers started using it and going, oh my God, uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't, I have my personal account. Now they're telling me I have to use the school account. Um, how do I switch back and forth between accounts? Uh, is that okay to do that? Um, I, I created a file and now I can't find it. I think it's in the other account, but I don't know how to get there. So all of these questions were coming up. So I created a, um, a training for it. And this is part, this is part one of three, this ebook that I'm showing you right now. This is part one of three. I'm going to give you all three ebooks. Okay, so at the end of this session, you will have a link that will open this up and you will be able to look at all of these slides. There's like 80 something slides on account management. Yeah, wow. Woo um, so the way this works is um, each slide, well, first of all, at the beginning, it tells you what's going to be covered. Okay, so this book one is going to be account types. Uh, book two is going to be let me scroll down here. Book two is going to be sharing and transferring. Okay. And then book three is going to be the actual account safety. So this, uh, I'm not going to cover everything today, folks. <laughs> this took four workshops, four two-hour workshops to cover, cover all three of these books. Okay. Uh, I, I, we don't have the time. I got an hour and a half. I got an hour. I got little, inf little uh, lots of information, I should say, and a little bitty space. OK, this was going to be a two hour session. I, I switched it with one of our other presenters because they went, oh, I need more time. So, OK, fine. I'll just talk faster. All right. This entire thing that I'm showing you can be a workshop at your California uh, adult education program. So if you go, oh, wow, you know, we really need that. Or if you see anything, any of the presentations that OTAN's um, giving you today or tomorrow, if you see anything that really piques your interest or you go, my staff need that, contact us and we will be able to do a workshop just for your staff free, 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 okay? Contact me later about that. And as I say the word me, it, it, it occurs to me that I didn't tell you who I am. I apologize. My name is Melinda Holt. Uh, I am at OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network, and we are housed at SCOE, Sacramento County Office of Education. OTAN is a grant-funded project. It's a leadership project, uh, as is CalPRO and CASAS. If you're from California, you know those, those acronyms. Um, I am a certified Google educator, level one and two. I'm a certified trainer. I've been a trainer since... Well, it's been a few years, um, I believe six. Uh, that's why I, at, at year five, they gave us this little T badge right here. I am also Google Cloud certified. Uh, I got in just as they were ending that, more on that later. I am a professional learning leader certifi certified and I am a Google admin. So I know the behind the scenes thing. So if your network person tells you, no, we can't do that and you don't believe them, contact me. I'll be able to tell you, yeah, he's right or she's right, or mm, yeah, maybe they don't know that they can go this way, okay? So that's me. Back to the handout. Or the, there's a table of contents for each one. If you don't know something or you want to jump right in, you can go to any one of these uh, titles, click it, and it opens, okay? If you wanna go back to the table of contents, you can click the TOC in the top right-hand corner and click it and it'll take you back. Okay, so it's going back and forth. So I think we went to like slide 
12 and then we're back on slide four. So this is a working live dynamic ebook. As I think of things to put in here or as updates are needed, it will be added. Okay, so that's kind of how this works. Um, any questions on the ebook? I know there's one coming. Come on, somebody ask. How do we get it? Hint, hint. How do we get it? Do you want it? Do you want it? You want it? You want this right now? All right. Yes. I, have, I need to explain one more thing because I'm not actually giving it to you. I am letting you see it as a student like this. All right. So there's the URL way down at the bottom. Bitly. And it is case-sensitive, case so it's HTTPS, Bitly account, and safety. I am going to uh, put this in the chat, so you can just click on it, and it will open, just like it has for me. All right. So there that is. Um, this is in what we call preview mode. If you're in Google land, you know preview mode means that you can look at it, and you can go through the slides uh, just by clicking. It'll go to slide two, and then you click, and it goes to slide three. Click, and it goes to slide four. All of the links still work. Okay, you click on the link, it goes to the page you want it to. You click on the TC, it comes back. TOC rather, it comes back. Okay, you cannot make a copy of it. I want a copy. You can't have a copy. <laughs> this is a dynamic ebook. A dynamic ebook. Um, if I'm making changes on it, and you've made a copy. Last week, you don't see the changes, okay? So you're more than welcome to share this with your students or share it with your staff. Share that link if you want, but please don't ask me for a copy of this. That being said, there is a PDF. So on slide five, the, the next part of the, the TOC, I'm gonna click the PDF link. And here is the last time it was updated, February 3rd, 2021. Okay, so if you click that, you can download. It's stuck in time. Please understand that it is stuck in time. All right. Now, this is the student, what I call the student view. So I'm going to close this because because I'm, you know, I'm the, I'm the trainer. So I get to see the real thing <laughs> and I can add to it if we see mistakes. All right, let's jump in here. Enough about the tutorial. You need to know the differences between your accounts. You might have two different types of accounts, the pub and the club. What's a pub? Well, it's, it's a term that was created way back when, back in Ireland, when, you know, the English, they wouldn't let the Irish have their own, their own bars because they thought we drank too much and what have you. So we recreated our own. We created, we, in our house, and we invited people into our houses, and it was called a public house, a public house. And as over the time, because you know everybody likes short words, we started calling it the pub. Yeah. So when you're in the pub, you can do anything you want. You can you can email, you can save files, you can do anything you want because it's yours, it's your pub. All right. So the difference between that and a club, in a club, you're quite proper and you must hold your cup just so like that, yeah? And if you don't hold your cup like this, this is actually your password right here, you have the key. And if you don't use the key correctly, you don't get in, do you? So a club will end in at net, at org, at edu. SCOE.net is a club, all right? So if you have a, a Google, you know you have a Google because it opens up Google Drive and it ends in at scoey.net, at mountdiablo.edu, at lausd.org. And I know that's not what yours is, but if it ends in something like that, it's a club. Why is that a big thing? Because when you have two accounts and you sign into one, that is your default. That's where everything opens first. Now I have a video screen open, so I'm gonna, it looks weird, but I'm gonna move my, um, my screen over a bit. And then if you're following along, go to google.com, just go to the Google search, okay? All righty. 
So if you've opened up the Google search page, and if you're using Chrome, it's much better if you're using Chrome. I'm just going to put that out there. Yes, you can use Edge and Firefox and any other browser you want, but it's better if you're using Chrome. Chrome is a Google and everything, and your Google is a Google, right? So use Chrome. Now, when you're on the Google search page, if you're signed in, you'll see your avatar. Now, mine's kind of small here, and I think if I, no, I didn't set it up. So right here, I can't zoom in anymore. Sorry about that, but I see my little face here, okay? And I know because it's got that green background, I know this is my pub account, okay? When I click on that avatar, it tells me oh, yeah. other ah, accounts yeah. that I have. All right, are you ready to go lay down? Yeah. Just leave Nick, it. I can get it in Nick, you, could, you, could you mute, please? <laughs> okay, I know somebody needs to go rest and maybe lay down, but uh, all right. <laughs> All right, so when you click on your avatar, you will see the other accounts that you're signed in, right? So here's a student account that I created because I need to see students, the student view sometimes. And here is my club account, mholt at scoey.net. So if I click on that, you're gonna see my browser change because I switched accounts. I switched accounts, I went from my pub to my now club and I know it's my club because I see the white background I'm wearing a brown shirt okay so I have two different avatars for different accounts when I click on the avatar again look in line on mine if you can see this and I, I wish I could make it bigger for you but it says SCOE tech and here's the magic word right here default that means I signed into this account first well Melinda why is that important because when I go to open my drive right now, let's go back to my, uh, this, is, this is the first account I signed into, right? First account I signed into was SCOE Tech, my pub. And when I go to Gmail, any minute now, yep, we gotta wait for the magic. It signs into the Gmail for the default account. If I go to Drive, it will open Drive to my default account, the one that I signed into first, okay? Can you switch? Absolutely, all right? So if you're creating um, educational resources, you probably wanna use your club account. Now, if you don't have one, you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about it, except you might have a teacher account on the pub and you might have a personal account on the pub. So then do you have to worry about it? Yeah, you do. Because you don't want to share that document with your students if your email address is partygirl at gmail.com, right? You want it to be eslteacher at gmail.com, right? So be careful or be aware of, I should say, be aware of who you are. Who are you when you open up Drive? The first thing I do when I open up anything is look at my avatar. Those of you that don't have an avatar, you can actually put one in. Uh, right now, if your first uh, name starts with a C, then you're going to see a letter C there. If your first name starts with an N, you're going to see a letter, letter N right here. All right. And if you go back and forth between accounts, you'll see the letter color change. So Vicky, it would be a letter V. It might be yellow on one account and it might be blue on the other. OK, you always have to look. <laughs> you always have to see who you are. Do that or get used to doing that before you start creating things. Uh, I don't know how many times I have. Uh, created a document and it's on my pub account. This is my work pub. It's not a big deal, but still, if I want it to belong to the club, now it's like, oh man, now I got to make a copy of it and I got to put it in the other drive. And blah, 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 blah. It's a lot more work. It's more work. So be efficient and know who you are. Remember, I told you, whoever you sign in first, that is going to be the default. It just means that that's going to be the account that opens things first. So if you go to, let's say you sign in and then you go to your slides. Okay. It always goes to the default. Can you switch? Yes. 
just click on your avatar if you're signed into two accounts. And yes, you can be. You can actually be signed into like 50 accounts. Don't do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Three, four accounts, no problem. But uh, when you select your avatar, you can switch just like that. Okay. Now, my, um, my club account also adds its little uh, what brand on it. I have no control over that. Right. But um, that's another way for me to tell who I am. I see that I would go, okay, I'm in my, my pub or my club or whatever. Or if I go to the student account, I look at the avatar. Okay. Yeah. Take a tour because I've never been here before on the student account. Right. So I know right away who I am by looking at that avatar. Do we have any questions on that? Cause that's really, I mean, I, I've taken like 20 slides and dumbed it down into about five, 10 minutes here. So know who you are. We're good. Okay, okay. Melinda. So you yes. recommend recommend us to create a, a different account uh, from the uh, school account. Um, do I recommend it? Well, okay. This is where Melinda's going to get in trouble. <laughs> All right. Um, you, I do recommend that you have your own personal account. Okay. I recommend that you follow your school's um, rules. Mm -hmm. And if they want you to use your club account with your students, then that's what you should do. If your students do not have a club account, that makes it harder on you to share. So, right. And that's right. going to be that's what I noticed. Yeah, that's that's in that. I think it's book two where we go over file and sharing and we will I will get to book two today. Okay. Um, so you know, you got COVID working for you right now. This is one of the silver linings of COVID that many adult education students did not have a club account and the teachers couldn't share things with them, right? Like, especially classroom. And you've got your district telling you, you will use classroom. And so the teachers went, yeah, okay, fine. But I can't get my students in it because you don't let them have accounts. So right. uh, let me ask you this question then. Sure. So that, that then they send us to, you know, share file, uh, uh, their need, they needed a permission. So I fiddle around and then I find that there is a link. Anybody who has the link can open it. Yes. Is this a safe? If I yeah. click that and any anybody has the link and they open, I give that permission, then that's a safe? That is safe. Yes. Okay. As okay. long as you don't give them edit rights. So the no, link that right. you're, yeah, the link that you're selecting when you go to show the viewable link, uh -huh. or share the viewable link, you're just giving them view rights. Exactly. View rights, <clears throat> view rights will give people permission to make a copy. Okay. Or download. So right now, if I had view rights, I would be able to make a copy of this slides deck or I would be able to download it as a PowerPoint, as a PDF, <clears throat> or even as a, a bunch of images put together, which you never want to do these on a really big slide stack. Okay. If I just wanted to grab the text, I could download it as plain text. So as a viewer, unless you turn it off, which you can do as a viewer, I can download or make a copy. When I make a copy, it's stuck in time. And it's mine. It's not yours anymore. So that was a long answer to your question. But yes, it is safe. I would say it was safe. Okay. Thank you. You bet. Uh, let's see. We've already gone over this. Like I said, we've gone over a bunch of this stuff. By the way, a little segue here. My student account where you saw, this. here's my avatar, Winky Hutu. Winky Hutu at yahoo.com. Well, how did you, how are you using Yahoo? Because I created a Gmail account, or shame on me, because I created a Google account using a Yahoo address. Yes, you can do that. And yes, your students can do that. So if you have a Yahoo, or if you have, God forbid, AOL.com, <laughs> still get rid of it, um, or, uh, you know, Comcast.net, whatever, email that you really like using, you don't want to use Gmail, you're never going to use Gmail, then create an account using that email address that you like. 
You can do that. You go to accounts.google.com and it will give you the option to create the account with another email address. So you get all of the Google tools on the pub. You get all of the Google tools without Gmail, right? And then if I, as a teacher, want to share with Winky Hutu, when I send out a message, it goes to yahoo.com. It's really, really kind of slick. And I think it's really smart on, on uh, Google's part because they don't have to worry about the file storage. <laughs> They're saving themselves some space. All right, and you. Um, I'm just looking here real quick. Yes, accounts. Okay, so let's say um, you're signed in and you notice that uh, somebody else is signed in on your computer and now their account is here. So let's say, for instance, Winky Hutu is a student and used my laptop and now I see that they're signed in. You can remove them. You can remove them by signing out. But you, when you do that, you have to sign out of all accounts. Okay, so just be aware of that you can remove them from the list you're not doing anything to that other person's account you're just taking them out of your list having them in the list as signed in or signed out it doesn't matter it's not going to do anything to your um to your account but if i allow my student to use my laptop and i stay signed in shame on me shame on me remember to sign out before you give your device to anybody. And I know we here recently, we haven't had to worry about that because we've all been home, right? But when you get back to classes and please let that happen soon, um, make sure you sign out of your account before you give your device to anybody. This, uh, let's see, we're on slide 34. This kind of takes you uh, through the order of removing accounts and what have you. So, Melinda. Yes. Going back to the winky how to Winky Hutu. Winky yes. Hutu. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm, it's kind of blowing my mind. I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around it. So the only difference is that they have a Yahoo account email, but they still can use Drive with that Yahoo. Absolutely. Still... Yeah. So I can go, um, hang on a minute. I'm going to go, I'm going to open a browser. Okay. Oh. And this oh, is actually, say, yes. Oh, say wait, she's wait, my wait, student. Wait, wait. Oh. Get, wait, wait, <laughs> we got lots of people talking. So let me show this first okay. and, and then and then we'll get back. Okay, so right here, the Firefox, I am, I should still be signed into two different accounts. Oh, look at that, all of these accounts. Okay, so all of these accounts have used this um, browser on this device before. So that's why they're all here. And here's a uh, blinkabinky at gmail.com. Here's a, oh, scoeytech at yahoo.com. So I could sign in. To and here's what's going to happen, okay? So you still have to sign in to, to Drive in order to use it. So Audrey, I would go to Yahoo. I would sign in. That only gets me Yahoo Mail. That's it. All right. Then okay. when I want to use Drive, I have to go to Drive and sign in there too. Now, if you have your students do this, word of advice: have them use the same password. So whatever their Yahoo password is, use that when they sign into Drive. Tell them when they create their accounts, use the same password, right? Because then they don't have to remember two different passwords. <laughs> There's no SSO between Yahoo and, and Google. This is a Google account. It's just using a, a Yahoo. And this is just public, not for club. Only the pub, yeah. This does not Got work it. for the okay. club. All okay? right, thank you. You bet. Now, Karen, I, I saw you come up. Did you still, do you have a question? Well, uh, my question was, can I do that with an existing account? Absolutely. If I have a Yahoo account and it, I've never created a Google with it, then I could go to accounts.google.com, put in my Yahoo address or my Comcast address or whatever address you want, Make sure it's the same password as that Comcast or AOL or, or Yahoo. When you create the Google, boom, you're in. Okay. There is, I believe it's also linked on here there, um, within the, the, the book. There's a link that will take you to a PDF 
that goes step by step how to create a Google account using another email address. So I don't leave you hanging. All right. It, there is um, there's another handout. There's a link in here somewhere. OK, I've got a lot to cover, so I'm not going to show you exactly where it is. Just trust me, it's in there somewhere. You're going to have to find it. OK, um, and this is the PDF on this. So the main point about this is know who you are when you sign into Google. Know who you are first, because that's going to be the default. So if you sign into your club account first, that's going to be default. And that will always open the tools first. If you, if you sign out of everything and then you sign into your public account first, that will be the default, which only, it just means that you're gonna have to switch between accounts if you want your public stuff to be private <laughs> and your school stuff to be public or with your students. Another question. Sure. So when you say default, you mean default on that particular day? I This is my device, so I stay signed in. I don't ever sign out on this computer. It's not dangerous if I'm the only one signed in or the only one using this device. Okay? So the so last default that you use. Whatever I sign in first, it doesn't matter. If I stay signed in, whoever I signed in first as that is the default account. Okay, so let me, I'm, here we go. And I shared this with myself. That's why it's opening. There we go. So I know by looking at, I clicked on the avatar, I know by looking at this that when it says SCOE Tech default that I signed in at some point on this computer, I signed in first with SCOE Tech at gmail.com. If I had signed in with mholt at scoey.net, it would say default next to that avatar. Okay? You mean it remains the default for that yes. device forever? Yes, for the, the entire session until you sign out. Until you sign out. Okay? I'm just, I've got a bunch of slides open now. Every time I click a link, it opens a slide. All right, let me get rid of that. Let me get rid of that. Okay, now, sharing and transferring. Um, there's a link here that will open part two for you as a student, right? Same deal. You can go between the slides. It tells you about the tutorials. Here are the, the links, right? You click on them, and it'll take you to that, uh, that page. All right, um, here are the sharing types and options that you have at your disposal on any Google account, whether it be club or pub, right? So if you, you as the owner, you have the supreme rights to everything that you create. Everything you create is yours or your clubs. Um, and even then it's still yours. All right. So as an owner, you're able to edit it. You're able to comment on it. You're able to view it. You can share it. You can do anything you want. All of these checks for owner, the owner is the supreme being. OK, when you give permissions to an editor, they can do pretty much what an owner can do. With some caveats. So change sharing permissions. As the owner, the owner can change that for an editor. If, um, if I'm sharing something with, um, and Karen, since you were the last one that spoke, if I'm sharing something with Karen, but I really don't want Karen to add Allison or Kirsten or Tony, then I would turn off that option for her to share. And yes, I'm gonna show you where that's at. Um, if I don't want Karen to be able to remove people, then I would turn that off. If I don't want her to be able to turn off copy options, then I would turn that off for her. So usually you give the editor all the same rights as the owner, except these two things cannot be done. You cannot delete the file permanently from the Googleverse if you are an editor, and you cannot transfer ownership to another account if you are the editor. 
Uh, as a commenter, you can do everything except the red stars here. If the owner has turned it off, then you can't do it. Okay, so this booklet that we're looking at right now, I have turned off the option to print or make a copy. Well, Melinda, how do you do that? I'm so glad you asked. Watch this. So I'm going to click on and I tell you what. Um, this is a good time. Go ahead and open something in Google. It doesn't matter if it's a Google Doc, a Google Sheet, or a Google Slide. So if you have to, go to your drive. Um, if you're on Google, the Google search page still, you could actually use the, I'm trying to look for it. Here we go. Uh, you could use the, the, the waffle is what they call it. It's a Google Apps Launcher, but you could use that waffle and just open up a slide, a sheet, a doc one of those three things where you could go to drive and then open one of those three things. And I'm stalling a little bit to give you time to do that. So open a doc sheet or slide. You could even segue, you could open a new, new one just by typing docs.new or slides.new or uh, sheets.new. That's all you have to do, especially when you're using Chrome. Now that also works when you're using Firefox and Edge now um, not all, not always though. I found out that sometimes on edge, it goes, ah, I don't know what that is. So I, I'm going to think it's a link. So, um, but on Chrome, it always works. All right. So I have a document open. If you got one open too, that's great. If you have a slide open, it's the same thing. The share button works the same. So if you have something open, click on your share button. Okay. Oh yeah. I need to title this. I'm going to, um, title this document Dilatito. <laughs> That's what I do so I can remember to delete it later. Okay, so after you click on the share button of something that was already titled, <laughs> you should see this. All documents that you create are restricted. They, they're not shared with anybody. You decide whether or not to share, right? Um, Chun-He, you were asking about the shareable link. Here's right here where you would, you can click on copy link or change to anyone with link. This will open it up to anybody. So if my student sends that link to their children or to their, their aunt or uncle or, or cousin, whatever, they can open it as well. Okay, that means anyone with the link means exactly that, anyone with the link. And here's where I would copy it. All right, so if you're gonna share with somebody and you don't care, uh, you would do this. And I have to hit done now. I'm gonna go back to the share button. So if you've done the same thing, that's great. It, just select the share button again. And now I see that anyone on the internet with this link can view. Well, Melinda, you said you were gonna show us how to stop them from making a copy. I am, I am, but you have to do that first, okay? If you're, if you're sharing with somebody. There we go. So I went to the gear. For those of you that missed that, in line with share with people in groups, there's a gear. I'm clicking on the gear. And there we see share Google, share with people settings. And there are two checkboxes here. And these are very important. Um, do I want my editor to have the same permissions as the owner to change permissions or to add to the share or to even select or deselect this uh, make a copy button? No. So I take that away. Now I'm looking at viewers and commenters can see the option to download, print, and copy. If I want them to see that option, then I leave it. If I don't, boom, I take it away. Now they cannot make a copy or download or print. And that's exactly what I did with those eBooks. I deselected this. And then I copied the link and I created a bitly out of it, but I could have copied that link and just giving it to you. And you would see the same thing that you're seeing now if you have one of those books open. All right. So you this didn't publish it. So I did not it publish it. No. Nope. Okay. <laughs> I don't publish to the web. And that is an option on Google Docs. Um, you're, I'm not going to say it's vulnerable or unsafe. I just I don't trust it all that much. So I don't do it. I don't publish to the web. Uh, another reason not to publish to the web is that it makes it less searchable. So 
I want to share this document just with my students. I want just my students to see it. If I publish it to the web, now it's going to be hit number 100,259,000, right? It's going to be way down on the list, but it's still searchable. Okay. And I don't want that. So not publishing, just sharing this way makes it less searchable. That's not to be saying that's not to say that it could never be searched for, but it just it just adds just a little layer of security, a little tiny one, very thin. Then, this is what you call the preview, then this is the preview. This is part of the preview. This part is of part the of the preview. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, you want to hit that gear and then turn off those options within the gear. And okay? if you want to send it as a preview like you did. Then I'm going to show you that magic if you wish. Okay. Yes. Please. Okay. So to make something a preview, I'm going to click the share button on the document that I want just to be previewed. I'm going to copy the link. Okay. I'm going to hit done. And then I'm going to go to some kind of a text editor. Now I already have one open. I already have docs open. So I'm going to just paste that big long link. Do you see that? I mean, it's huge. And let me make it huger so you can see it better. We're just going to bump that up. And we might even make this last part bold because that's the important part. So um, if I hadn't made it so big, you could say, hang on a minute. Let me go down a spot. There we go. So at the end of every shared link, all shared links end the same. All shared links end the same. Every link that you share ends the same in its Google, okay? And it ends with edit, question mark, USP equals sharing. What you do when you want something to be preview is you take just that text and replace it with the word preview. Now the W went to the next line because it was big text, okay? So let me show you that again. If you want something just to be preview, what you're going to do is you're going to look at the very end of your share link. You're going to select edit question mark USP equals sharing. And you're going to mark it or rename it preview at the end. Then you take this link and you put it into your URL shortener, whatever you want to use. I use bit.ly or you can send this link to, I'm going to put this in chat right here. And you can click on it and you will see this document in preview mode. And I can add text. And while you're opening it, you might have to refresh. And then I can change things. Okay, so if anybody clicked on that link and they and they didn't see these next two lines, just hit refresh. <clears throat> You're going to see it. This makes the document live, dynamic, so not stuck in time. The difference between preview and view. So if you change preview to view. not a lot, except you can. It gives you a, a different interface on slides and docs. Um, the preview on the, the, the ebook that you have, you know, it, it's, it, it's more viewable. I'm going to quote unquote viewable. They've actually, it used to be a big difference. It's not so much anymore since they gave us those check boxes. Um, this adds a layer of security right here, that preview. I'm not going to go in depth and detail on that because it's just too hard to explain, but it does add a thin, very thin layer of, of security. Um, and it actually, well, yeah, I'm not going to get into this. <laughs> it's like, I'm thinking how hard this would be to explain and it's just, it would take up too much time. Okay. So I, I hope that answered the question. So yes, the preview yes. doesn't seem to allow you to edit or anything, just the view. You, exactly. You can't edit. You can't make copies. You can't do anything. So if I have a table of contents for a student and it has sites on it, uh, just trying to think of some sites here. Okay. And I know you would never send your students to OTAN, but if I create, you know, I, I've got a list here. 
Now, if you hit your refresh button, you're going to see just those words. OK, right now I'm going to make this a link. And if you hit your refresh button, you'll see that OTAN became a link that you can click on now and it will take you to that site. OK, so I can do all kinds of things and I never have to worry about my students having the most latest, greatest because they can't make a copy. And if they can't make a copy, that means I control a little bit, right? I control this. Now, can they take a screenshot of it? Of course. Yeah. And then they could create their own stuff. You know, um, if, if, if someone really wants something that's on the web, they're going to get it if they really want it. They want to put the time and effort into it. But this, I mean, this is so cool that it's a dynamic, always, it's a living, breathing document that I never have to worry about if my students have the latest, greatest because, oh, God, did they make a copy of it? What, you know, which, which version do they have? I never have to worry about it. I know they have this version. It's always the right one. Okay. This is covered a lot more in this document, uh, the sharing. And... Melinda, yes. can I ask you? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Just uh, uh, recently, I've been, I use the uh, Google... Google um, Doc to create the survey things. Okay. And, uh, you know, I accidentally send out kind of edit mode. Okay. So actually the viewer actually modified, edited. <laughs> so, so then that's it, huh? You can't find the go back in the original. Oh, absolutely. You can go back in time. Yeah. How do you, oh, so I, I couldn't do it. So, so. Real, real quick. Um, this is a whole nother workshop here, but when you have <laughs> any Google tool open now, any Google tool, uh, you can go to file. Okay, you're okay. gonna go as the editor, you have to go to the file menu and uh -huh. then you're gonna go to version history. Ah. Okay. And then you're gonna see version history. Now I defy you to find this on Microsoft. Oh, uh, my. Version history on a Google doc goes back to the beginning of time of the document. So if I wanna see what this document looked like at the beginning of its time, if it's inception, okay. here it is right here. There was absolutely uh -huh. nothing on it, <laughs> okay? Uh -huh. And then if I have a little arrow next to a date, I can look at the history of this document by clicking on what was the date and the time the different dates and times so nice. what you do is you go back you find the version that you want okay here it is this is before anybody screwed it up right yeah and then you're going to click restore this version please make absolutely sure that this is the version you want because once you do this you can't go back in time anymore ah this is like well, that's a trick yeah so if I restore this, boom, there, it's gone back in time. Okay. And, but like I said, once I do that, I can't, I can't really undo it. It's, it's there now. Now, if you wanted a copy of the, you know, maybe you want to go back in time, but you want the, the copy of it as it, as it was like, you know, after all the changes were made, you want to see what the changes were made, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So make a copy of the file first. So you go to file, make a copy that opens up in a new window. Then you come back to the original document and then change the version history. Version history is a game changer for everybody. Um, I can go back to this ebook, the, the original ebook, and I'm going to go to file uh, version history here. And this is going to take a while because this document was created back in January and actually was created before that um, because I copied it over. So if I wanted to see what this original document looked like back in January, January the 19th, right? I could go back in time to that version and see what, well, what did I do back in? back here. That's the other thing on version history, folks. It will take you um, the text, especially on docs. It's very apparent uh, on docs. The, the text will become green. So you know exactly what was done. Okay. And if you have more than one person um, editing the document and you share with them as an editor, you will also see their names in version history. So you know who did what. So we kind of got off the topic a little bit. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, Going well, you did help preview. me tremendously because uh, I struggled to finding it and very simple word that where to find the virgin history. Yeah. That really helps. Cool. Very good. Very good. And Thank somebody you. else was talking. Yeah. So when you do a preview, is there any way to drop the preview in a Google folder or it's just the link you can share? Like, so if I have a presentation that I did um, and I, I want to drop it into a Google folder for others, I can I drop the preview version in there or you the can drop it in there as a document. You can drop it in there as a slide. You can drop it in there as a Google draw file. It has to be a file. Oh, it has to be a file. Or you okay. can send it as a Gmail. Okay. Yeah. So you take that link and you can send it to people. Um, I've never tried this before, but I just had the thought maybe naming the folder with that link. But then you have to share the folder. So it's kind of counterintuitive to do. Uh, right. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. So back to accounts and safety, sharing and transfer. So this is between accounts. If you have, now I'm just, when we, we're talking about accounts, I'm just talking about your accounts. You have a club account, you have a pub account. Okay. The sharing works the same between you and students as well. But you have to think of yourself as two different people when you have a club and a pub, right? You've got your public entity self and you have your club, your teacher self. So, so you have to know who you are. And yes, you have to share with yourself. Uh, Pre-COVID, maybe everything you created was in your public account because that's what you could use. And then after COVID, your district decided, oh my God, we got to get all of our teachers on our club now. And you were told, start using your club. But I have all these files in my pub, right? So could you put the link on a doc and just put the doc in the folder? Absolutely, Nick. Yes. Um, but again, you have to share the folder with somebody in order to get it to them, right? A, a link tree is a really good idea. A really good idea. Uh, back to accounts. <laughs> I created this SCOE tech. And I have shared it with my club self as an editor. I trust myself, so I give myself edit rights, okay? So just, you can, you don't have to make copies of everything that you put or that you created in your pub. You don't have to make copies of everything. And then as your club self, you don't have to do that. You could actually just share between accounts, but you have to remember who you are. You have to remember who you are. Get used to looking at that avatar. Who am I right now? Um, I have one teacher um, that I've been helping that actually she started using um, she started using her pub with her students. Now she's using her club and she only gives her club view rights. So she still creates everything in her in her pub, but she shares everything with her club entity with her teacher self but she only gives her teacher view rights. And that way she knows in her mind, it works for, her. Um, but it, you know, you might also, you might, um, if you are sharing, right? This is my pub account. I'm switching right now to my club account. And wow, look at that. I only have view only. Okay. I can, because I've allowed myself to, or because I've allowed viewers to, Oh, no, I didn't. I forgot to add that link. So I, if, if I had set this up right, I would have been able to make a copy of this file. And then that way the file becomes, um, I don't know what I want to say. The file becomes owned by, the, the second file becomes owned by the club account. So when you make a copy of your file, you have two. Right, you've got one in your pub, and now since you've made a copy, you've got one in your club, and that can get confusing, especially when the file names are the same. And then you make all these changes on one of them, but you can't remember, and then you make changes on the other one, but the changes are different because you didn't remember who you were when you went to go make changes. So be careful and keep looking at that avatar so you know who you are when you're making changes, when you're creating files, when you're sharing with yourself. You know, fill in the blank. There's lots of reasons to look at that avatar to know who you are. Um, I keep 
opening up new tabs. There we go. Any questions on that? There's lots more on sharing here, okay, about transfer of ownership. You can do that between pub accounts. So if I wanted to, if I, um, let's say I started all of my files as partygirl at gmail.com. And then, oh, oh man, I should really have teacheresl at gmail.com, right? So I can share with myself pub to pub. And when you do that, after you, after you add somebody, let me see, one of my, one of my, plub, my plub accounts, blink a binky, here we go. We're going to use this one. Um, after you share with somebody, I'm going to send, you have to share as an editor. Okay, so you share as an editor, and then you go back to the share, you can actually make them the owner. Oh, wow, this would be really cool if you could make owner or if you could change ownerships between club and pub, huh? They won't do that. You can't do that. <laughs> okay, it has to be pub to pub, or club to club. So, um, and I know you guys aren't at the same agency, but I'm going to use your names anyway. Chris, Christina and Tony, let's say you guys are in the same agency and you're both using your club and you're both working on a WASC document. Christina, you get promoted. You're no longer working on that WASC document. Well, you don't want Yay! Tony to lose it. Yay! <laughs> you don't want Tony to lose it though. So what you would do is transfer ownership to Tony. Right. That way you're off of it. You can take yourself off of it. And Tony still has it so he can continue to do the wask. All right. So that's club to club. You can do the same thing pub to pub. You can transfer ownership between at gmail.com to at gmail.com. Or if the account is using an at yahoo.com, that's considered public. It's a hybrid pub. You can transfer ownership that way as well. Melinda, oh, show me yes. that again, because sure. I did have an incident that I wanted to give the ownership and I did not find that one. So show me again. that. OK, one. so what I'm going to do to do that, to absolutely show you how to do it, I'm going to go to I'm going to go to uh, my club drive. Actually, I'm going to go to my club docs. There we go. I had to rethink that. So I'm going to go to my docs. I'm going to make sure I'm in my club. OK. I'm going to go to OTAN, we'll see demo share doc title, we'll go to doc title. I'm just opening up random file, okay? I'm gonna share this with someone in my club. So I hit the share button, I'm gonna go to my club and I'm gonna share it with this person who I know is in my club. I'm gonna put a message in here cause she's actually gonna wonder what the hell is this? Um, this is just for fun. Delete it if you want. There we go. All right. Now, I can't make her an owner yet. I have to share with her and as, as an editor first, okay? So I'm going to hit send. She's going to get a message that says, hey, Melinda just shared this document with you, okay? You can do it right away. You don't have to wait for that person to acknowledge the share. You can click on the share button again right away. And then as I look in line with her name, I see the word editor. At this point, I can change it to anything, including make owner. Boom. Do you really want to make this person an owner? Really? The new owner will be notified. Some people will lose access to this item unless the item is shared. The big scary message. If you're really sure, yes, you want this person to be owner, just hit yes. You know what you're doing, right? and then hit done. Now, what do I become when I give someone else ownership of a file? Did anybody catch that? Yeah, it was uh, shared with one person. It's shared with one, but what, what are my rights editor. now? Editor. I am an editor, exactly, editor. exactly. And as an editor, guess what? I can remove myself now and save it. Yes. Okay. <gasps> but the document's still open. Yeah. But you can't do anything to it. And once you close that tab, I'm going to copy this link just to prove it to you. I'm going to close this tab. I'm going to refresh my see where it was I can't even remember what it was called, but I'm going to open a new tab and I'm going to paste that link. Right? 
And it's going to tell me, nope, because I removed myself from the document. Okay. Troubleshooting so, question. Sure. So I, um, I have three counts. One, uh, two Only pub, three? one club. <laughs> yeah, I do. Two pub, one club. Okay. Uh -huh. And so I'm, my default is my club, my school district one. Okay. I go to slides mania. I download a slides template and it always goes to my pub account. So is that because it's slides mania has that filter or that permission? It could be, it could also be because just go to google.com. Mm -hmm. What account appears next my to the waffle? Club. Your club? Always my club. My always club is your my club. Default. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Then yes, you did attach Slides Mania to a specific account. So you could sign out of Slides Mania, uh -huh. sign back in, and when it asks you, or uh, you actually be creating a new account. Okay? okay. A lot of apps now, they ask you, hey, do you want to attach this to your Google? Which is really cool because it means once you're signed into your Google, you can open that app. You don't even think about it. You don't have to, you don't have to remember your user ID or password or anything for that particular app because it's connected to your Google. So it's actually created a single sign on an SSO for you. Uh, there's no sign on for slides mania though. You had to connect it to your Google account. Somehow. Otherwise you would have to do something. Okay. Okay. Um, once you connect it to a Google, you don't have to sign on. You're right. Okay. So sign out of everything, then go to Slides Mania and see what it says. And I bet you it gives you the option to connect, reconnect your account or connect to another account. Okay. And if it doesn't, come to the networking lounge this afternoon and let's discuss. Okay. Because okay, I'd be interested you. to see that. Okay. Um, okay. Sharing, sharing drives, blah, blah. Share Linda, drives. I have a question. I'm you sorry. Bet. No problem. Um, so, Regarding sharing, what, what will happen to a document if, for example, um, it was shared with you and you're, you're just a viewer um, and the person, the, the original owner leaves, like say they, they move to another location and mm -hmm. they, they sever the, um, their, their email, what, what will happen to the document? Well, um, if they didn't sever the... Uh the share the share stays until they turn it off okay if you still have access to the document the first thing i would do is check to see if i could make a copy of it and if i can make a copy then i don't have to worry about them anymore it's mine after i make a copy okay yes. um on a club this also happens on the club uh teachers retire right and after six months all of their stuff is put into an archive and you don't have access to it anymore. So if you're planning on retiring, <laughs> you might want to, number one, get all your stuff out of that drive. Uh, and number two, make sure that it's shared with somebody else and that they can make copies of it. Yes, the administrator on the back end can actually assign everything in that drive to a specific person. It takes a lot of hoops. You have to, you know, you got to have the admin's permission. You got to have the network admin's permission because you're actually sharing a bunch of personal stuff um, <clears> or <throat> actually stuff that was created on your club. You're sharing that with somebody else or you're giving it to somebody else, I should say. So, which leads me to the next thing. The stuff on your club, folks, should only be related to your club. Don't, don't put your personal photos in your club drive because, hey, I got all this space. I can put all my photos here. No, don't, don't do that because it really doesn't, I mean, it belongs to you, but you could lose access like that. On the admin side, it only takes a checkbox for me to preclude you from getting to your stuff. All right, now, would I ever do that? Absolutely not. No, network admins are not there to make things hard on you, believe it or not. They're really not, <laughs> okay? Um, they get a bad rap. But if, if something is, is detected that is, uh, what's going on here? Or um, maybe there's been a complaint made or something. That, and I'm not saying that would ever happen to you. I'm just trying to make you aware that what's on the club belongs to the club, right? 
So make sure what you save to the club is just club re related. Don't put the picture and photos using your club account of you standing on a table with the lampshade on your head, right? If you don't want your parents to see it, if you don't want your partner to see it, if you don't want your principal to see it, don't put it in your club drive, okay? There, big scary, scary is over. Um, on club accounts, they have something called shared drives. They used to call this team drives, and then Microsoft started calling their new thing a team. So Google said, okay, fine, we're shared drives now. So this used to be a shared or a team drive. It's now shared drives on a club. And what you can do, this is really cool on a club. You can create a new drive. Uh, what you do is you go to shared drives, you right click, and you tell it you, you want a new shared drive. So let me go over that again because most people miss it. They don't understand. To create a shared drive, you have to right click on shared drives and then new shared drive. Now, here earlier, we just talked about WASC, right? And all the files that you have to have for a WASC review are all going to be in this new shared drive. I just created it. There it appears. And there's absolutely nothing there. Okay, I don't have to do WASC, so ha ha. <laughs> but I can add people now. I can add people and everything on this drive this new shared drive belongs to the drive. So I don't have to worry about editors deleting a file from this thing here because I can manage them. Um, I'm going to, let's see, manage members. There we go. It's a little different when you're adding people. I'm gonna add just a few people out of my club. Yes, you can add people outside of your club, but usually it takes a, um, on some clubs, it takes some special permission. So these people that I'm adding right now are actually on my club. And notice these selections have changed. I don't have editor, now I have content manager. So only content managers can add, edit, move, and delete files, right? Right here, if I make it a manager, then I, they can manage content, people, and settings. So they can't delete files if I make them managers. So isn't that cool? No, this is not available on the club or pub. <sighs> it sounds the same. That's why I get messed up. This is not available on the pub, but it is available on the club. So share drives, and you can actually, there's different settings. And that's in that, um, that handout. Okay. Well, I've been talking. To... Go ahead. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry. I'm <laughs> Go sorry. Ahead. Um, I have another question regarding regarding the the shared drives. Okay. So if if you have the actual shared drive and you have a folder inside there, and within that folder is another folder, and then there's the file on that, you know, on that particular folder. So it's uh -huh. a it's a shared drive, a folder within a folder, and a file. Right. If if I share that file. And I have a bunch of other files in there. Um, the other people won't necessarily be able to see it unless they're on the parent folder, right? On the actual external folder. Yes and no. It depends. You as the creator of the shared drive can um, change permissions at any level. So okay, but if I only want to, if if I only want one person, you know, one one particular person to only be able to see that file and not the other files on the other folders, then you I would, would have to dig into that file and yes. only share that file. Correct. As opposed to putting them on the other folders. You could also not put them on the folder and okay. just put them on the file. Okay, now and, if you have a folder that that is residing within the other folders, but you only want a particular person to only see that particular folder, you will mm -hmm. you you can only share that folder, right? So they don't see the no. other folders. What you're talking about is cascading permissions. Mm -hmm. So um, and tell you what, let me. Uh, is there a new slide? There we go. So real quick demo here. So I'm going to get a. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I'm taking too long. Here we go. Okay, so this right here is the top level, level folder, right? The one in the very far back, that's the top level. And then uh -huh. I have another folder within it. 
and then I have another folder within it. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm this cascading. So whatever permissions I put at this one right here, this top one, it's going to cascade down into the next ones. That includes all of the files in each file folder. Mm -hmm. I can then go into, let's say, file two for folder two. I'll go into folder two and I go, you know, Chun he, ah, nope, she doesn't need access to anything in this folder. So I can remove her from that folder level. Or I can go into that folder to a specific file and I can add her if she wasn't added already, or I can delete her. Okay. Okay. So you've got a lot of management options, but just remember whatever's at the top is going to flow down first. So that's cascading permissions. They go down. You've never seen a waterfall go up, have you? And if you no. have, run. Um, <laughs> so just remember they cascade down, but then you have control over your waterfall. You have control over where the water goes, who gets permissions to what. Okay. You have so, you have the power when you create the shared drive. Okay, so basically, um, the the permissions go by tiers. Yes. So if you put them on the on the uh, innermost tier, the mm -hmm. you can only see what's on the innermost tier. Exactly. If you give the permission on the secondary tier, then they can see the secondary and the first one. Right. Got it. Okay. Or you can take them in and out. See, I'm, just, I'm saying yes. But I'm also saying maybe because you control it. You could you can put them at the second tier and they'll see the third tier, right? Or mm -hmm. you can put them at the second tier and take them out of the third tier. Okay, got it. Yeah, it's up to got you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So that's on the sharing. Were there any other questions on sharing with your account? Yeah. Have you ever seen anybody use the shared drives as maybe a way to um, for your own file? So like I have so many files, if I just put a shared drive for the different programs that I'm involved in, but it's just for me, has anybody ever used it that way? Yeah, there's one right here in mine. <laughs> um, we uh, got together as I, I started using these, this shared drive doc and um, accessibility checks. And it was just for me, but I knew that it might be important to some other people. So later on, I added five people who said, yeah, I want that file. I want to use that. Um, would you ever just have a shared drive with yourself? Yeah, you could on your club. Um, it's kind of lonely. Um, why? It's no different than having a folder on my drive. So here's a, here's an assignments folder that I, not, I haven't shared with anybody. It's just like having a shared drive. It's exactly the like same 50 thing. Fifty folders. So that's why I'm like maybe the important <laughs> ones I put on shared drive or something. You know what? It doesn't matter. It, um, shared drive isn't more important or less important than my drive. It's just a different drive with different sharing permissions. So if all of your files on my drive, they're no less important or they're no more protected or anything. They have no little special anythings over a shared drive. And a shared drive doesn't have anything over them, especially you. if you're not sharing with anybody. It's the same. Amanda. Okay. I'm sorry. Is there is it is it possible to move a folder from the shared to the personal? Because I know that on um, in my district, I can move a folder from my personal to the shared, but it always says that if you do that, it will become the the um, the uh, the ownership will transfer into my district. Correct. Right. So. Um, is there a way to move the folder back from the shared to the personal? You you can't. Okay, well, here, let me, I'm going to create a folder. I think I understand what you're talking about. Oops. I, I uploaded. Oops. Yes, you can upload entire folders of information. Oh, not a file. Come on, Melinda. Where is folder? There we go. Uh, new. All right. So here's a new folder, right? And let's say I add a person just for grins and giggles because I want to get that message you were talking about, Emma Levitas. She's going to get all kinds of stuff. She's going to, what is this? What are you doing to me? All right, so here, I've got two people on this WASC folder, okay? Now I'm going to try and move this folder from the WASC shared drive into my drive. And this is what, it, uh, the, is this what you're talking about? 
Everyone who can see this share drive WASC will lose access to this item unless this item is shared directly with them. This action cannot be undone. So if I move something from, I have to, number one, I have to have created the folder in the shared drive. If I created the folder and put it in the shared drive, it belongs to me. Okay, I am the supreme leader of that folder. So I can drag it out. If I'm not the supreme leader, if I'm just a content manager, I cannot drag it out. I can make copies of it. Okay, I can make copies, but I can't, I can't prevent it or I, I'm not allowed to put it in my drive to prevent everybody else from seeing it. So you Actually, are restricted. No. With, Actually, no. with mine, and I'm looking at it right now, if it's mm -hmm. on the shared drive, even though I know I created that, it won't even allow me to drag it. Okay. If I go on my drive and I try to drag any folder there into the shared drive, it allows me to move it. Right. But so I can't you even can drag it out. Yeah. You can go from shared or my drive to shared drive, but you can't go from shared drive to my drive. Exactly. Your network is precluding that. Okay. Okay. So again, you don't have as many rights as you do with a public account. You can do anything you want in a public account. It's yours. So you can do anything you want. I did I did I did I okay but when in your pub you're actually being controlled by somebody else so you have to do what they tell you to do you can ask you can certainly ask and they can change settings for you if they're of the mind to do that <laughs> all right um you can certainly ask though Thank all right you. sure um let's see here Okay, I'm kind of at the end of what I wanted to discuss on book two. Book three, Google and Chrome account safety. This goes into all of these security settings that you might want to know about on your pub account, especially. On your club account, you're kind of protected. Um, your network is looking out for you. You shouldn't have too many worries. But on your pub account, and if you want to follow along, um, just go to, make sure you're signed into your pub account, go to accounts.google.com. Oops, accounts.google.com. La, 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 there we go. Had the URL all the way, da, 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 wait for the magic. Boom. Here we go. So this is going to help you keep your account secure. Um, you, you can, you can usually get to this using your club account as well, but you won't be able to do as many things because your network is doing them for you. Okay. Uh, you won't be able to change your password when you're on a club account. Normally, I should say, whenever I say, no, you can't, there's always, there's always room for error on Google. So normally you, you are not allowed to change your password on a club account on your pub account. You can, okay. On your club account your school account, you might be required to change your password every year or every six months or never. You don't have to change it ever. We don't want you to change your password, right? So the, the club has settings on your account uh, using the club. When you're on your pub, you can manage your data. Um, if they find any security issues, this is really cool. So I'm going to go to uh, the security checkup and they found something that that looks risky oh my god uh remove risky access to your data so evidently i gave word search access to my google docs for those of you that are googlers you know that when you add extensions it asks you can let's say um one of these up here bitly uh, dot com have access to your Google account or I'm sorry, Bitmoji or can app screen reader have access to your Google Docs? It can change your files. It can do this. It can do that. All they want is permission to put files into your drive that you've created using that app. So this um, app, awesome app screen recorder, I allow it to put the files that I've created into my Google Drive. I've attached them. Evidently, I did the same thing with word search. Right. So I can remove access at this point because Google. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know it. It's fine. Um, you've got a little more button next to the apps that might be appearing there for you. You can ask it to remind you later or just dismiss. I know word search. It's fine. I've been using it. It's no problem. So you could dismiss this message and then you won't see it again. 
I keep it here just so that I can show it during a, uh, a uh, presentation. <laughs> What's the word sounds like? Okay, um, I'm going to continue to my Google account again. And then there's some privacy suggestions. Uh, you can manage your storage when you're on your pub account. It will tell you how much storage you have. I have 17 gigs. Um, I got two extra gigs for doing a survey for Google. And they thanked me by giving me two extra gigs of storage, which I don't need because I'm not even using a gig of storage yet. All of my files are saved as Google. I use Gmail. I use um, Docs, Sheets, and Slides. When I want to use PowerPoint, I upload the PowerPoint into my Google Drive and it changes to a Google Slides deck. Boom. No space. So if you want to manage your storage, you click there and it tells you exactly how much storage you're using in certain areas. PDFs cannot be made of Google, they will take away storage. Photos cannot be made Google, takes away storage. Videos cannot be changed, audio cannot be changed. So those different file types, they can't be made of Google, so they will take away from your storage. If you save everything as Google though, if you don't put Word files in your account and leave them as Word files, you're not using any space. I've been using Google since 2000 and for a long time. And like I said, I'm not even using a gig yet. So if you get any notices, hey, you're almost out of storage on Google, wanna buy some more? Don't do it. Just convert your files to Google and you'll be fine. Okay, um, there's a lot more here on the account settings. There's also, what I wanted to show you, there's Chrome settings, and that's part of the handout as well. And I think I'm supposed to be ending <laughs> in you have seven, seven minutes. minutes. I got you seven minutes. Okay. Yeah. So real quick on Chrome, when you sign into your Google account, remember, I signed in with my Gmail first, so that's why I've got um, my little green background here. There are a bunch of uh, shamrocks. Okay. And when you sign in, that also becomes your default Chrome account. So if you're using Chrome, you should see two avatars. The default is always your Chrome avatar. I'm going to change my Google avatar to my club account and watch what happens to the Chrome avatar. Nothing. It stayed the Chrome avatar. It's still the, the my work or my, my pub account. Okay, I know you can barely see it. I wish I could make it bigger for you, but I can't. Right here, it's got the green background on it. This is my club account. This is my Google account. This is my Chrome account. So when you sign into Google, the first account that you sign into becomes your default account. And it also becomes the account that Chrome recognizes as, oh, first account, that must be the most important one. So we're gonna keep that. Okay, can you switch between accounts on Chrome? Yes, but not very easily. So keep that in mind. Yes, you can switch between accounts. It's not as intuitive. It's not just like click change, click change. You have to actually sign out of everything, sign back in, blah, blah, blah. It, it's a long process. Okay, for those of you that are Googlers, it, it's not going to be that long of a process for you. I understand. All right, but those of you that, that are, what is she talking about? The Chrome. Just trust me, the first account you sign into is going to be your Chrome, your Google. They're going to be kind of attached. Now, is it the same user ID and password? Yes. Yeah. This account, this, here we go, go back to the green avatar. This account is the same user ID and password. What happened when I signed in? It said, do you want to sync your, all your data with Chrome? Yes, absolutely. Because that way I get my bookmarks. I get all my Chrome extensions. Um, I get all my stuff. I can sign out. I'm going to do it. I'm going to sign out of all accounts. Ah! There it goes. And because our Google is attached to a club, it's signing me out there. Now, do you see what happened to my Chrome? It just paused. Okay, I can still use Chrome, but now I have a paused button here. All right, so if what I would do I want to use my Chrome. I can go do searching. I'm not signed into Google. All of a sudden, hey, oh, I want to do my email, right? So I need to sign back in, okay? 
So I'm gonna, I just go to any Google tool, doesn't really matter. And I choose the account I want to sign in with. It could be any one of these. Google has already attached and sunk my Chrome account. So it's waiting for this one to sign in first. Okay. And when I do sign in with this account, Google will know, aha, SCOE Tech is back. We can sync because she already told us she wants to sync. Now, hopefully I remember my password. Please. Penny has a great question in the chat about- Sure, um, what, what, what? Uh, allowing Chrome to keep passwords for you. What do you think? Oh my God, I'm gonna cover that next. Thank you very much. No. <laughs> okay, simple answer. No. So, but real quick, do so you see how it doesn't say paused anymore? Because I already signed into this, this device using this Chrome, using my um, pub account. So Google was waiting for me to do that. If I wanted to, I could have switched accounts on Chrome. Now, next to the Chrome avatar is um, a settings. Okay. So you're going to, or more button. The skinny snowman, skinny upright snowman. So you're going to click on that more button. You're going to go to settings. And here's where you can manage your Google account. And yes, there is a password. Yeah, Google can. Yeah, we'll just remember all your passwords for you. Should you ever let a browser remember your passwords? No. 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 If you can't remember your password, and I understand it's hard. You've got... 49 accounts across all of these apps and stuff. Everyone's got a different password or everyone wants a different password. It's hard. So use something like LastPass or some app that will remember your password for you. Um, there's a lot of people here in the office that use LastPass. I actually don't use anything to remember my passwords. And yes, I have a different password for every single account, but I have a system. What I do is I have like the first part of every, all my passwords. It's like 12 characters. Let's pretend it's a song, okay? And it's got some uppercase letters. And maybe the letter three, or the letter three, the number three I use as an E in this song title, okay? And then at some point, in that I will put the app name. Let's just pretend. And that's my that's a system. That is not the system I use. That's the one I tell everybody about. So use different passwords. Either have a system where you know every single app that you sign into, you know the password for it. Don't use the same password for everything. That's a no-no. You guys know that. You've heard it. And you've probably dismissed it. Don't dismiss it. <laughs> Okay, I'm here to tell you that's wrong and it will bite you in the butt. So don't use the same password for everything. Get some sort of a system or use a password saving app, not a browser. A browser is not a password app. It doesn't have as much security behind it. It's not in any shape, way or form insured uh, to help you. You know, it just don't, don't do it. So if you have this on, I just turned it on. So the next time I go in to sign something, sign into something, it will offer to save the password for me. And if I say yes, it will appear here. And guess what? If somebody else, if Vicki came into this office and she opened up my browser, I stay signed in because it's my device. She can come here and she can look at all my passwords. Oh yeah, they're not encrypted. You can actually turn off the encryption because it figures, hey, you're signed in. You should know what you're doing, right? Don't save passwords on a browser. That's a no-no, okay? Within Chrome, you have other security that you can set up. Don't turn on passwords, that's the main one. So, um, go ahead. Melinda. Uh -huh. I've been using that for a long time, so should I go in there and just dump it all? I would, but first I would write down all my passwords off to the side. <laughs> but usually it won't let me look at them. They're all hidden. You're going to click on it and you should be able to see, I don't save them. There is a way to look at the passwords when you have it saving. Um, so again, come to the networking lounge this afternoon and I I'll, I'll go over that with you, Karen. Okay. 
Okay. We'll one, Melinda. Yeah. Anybody else that wants to, yeah, I got to end. Okay. You have, I'm going to um, show that link real quick and I'm going to send you out before I get in trouble. Here is the magic link right here. I'm going to put it in the bit.ly again. This will have, this will open three different books for you. Um, all on security and account settings. And I hope you learned something. Um, if you like this presentation and you're in California and you're WIOA funded or part of a consortium, we can actually come and do this presentation for you uh, or just your staff, or you can look for it on the OTAN site. Anybody can, um, anybody can come then. And we go over, the, this is like a three-part series that we do.